It is a good day to scry. We're going to do a little bit of uh, LCI draft action. And uh, if I can go all in on Bat Colony, we will. But it looks like we have Tarion's Journal. Sack another artifact or creature. Draw a card. This is a power, 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 power pick. I mean, the fact that you don't have to do anything to just, like, you just tap it and you just draw. <laughs> really insanely good. And comboing it with things like Tinker's Tote is great. So I'm going to get Tyrion's Journal. <laughs> and it also flips to become a cave. Great for bats. So that's a super solid pick one. To fossilize, turn creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and then it explores twice. Incredible. Love it. Oh, yeah, Triumphant Chomp. I, I actually do quite like Glowcap Lantern. I think it's a little awkward, but um, I think some of the stuff I'm looking for is a lot of the good black removal, dead weight, whatever the minus five, minus five one is, that is not Dismember, but my brain is just like, it's basically Dismember. All right, Tarion's Journal, we're getting it. I mean, there happens to be Amalia. She's okay. There's not a ton of life gain here. But she is a 2-mana two 2-2. Two, two. She has Ward 3. I don't think that Canonized in Blood is very good. I'm just going to get Amalia, I think. Um, I also, especially with Tarion's Journal, I'm looking to pick up Mephitic Drafts. Is there anything else good? Yeah, Malamet Battle Glyph is probably the good one. I think Colossodactyl is also very good. All right, well, whatever. We're rare. We are rare drafting. Vanguard of the Rose is going to be the one that I'm picking no matter what. I'm getting this. I mean, I've said this a lot. I really like getting on the board in this format. It, I, I think it rewards you a lot. Even if you're a slow deck, just getting a presence on the board. Soul, Co Soul Coil Viper, I think, is also very good for the ability to just do play this on three and then on four you use one of your land cyclers sack this and return it to the battlefield hello dude gifted set oh my god 10 gifts hello dude this has a high probability of wheeling so i'm not that worried about it oh my oh my goodness it appears we have echoing deeps Oh my goodness. So I'm probably going to get the dead weight. I'm normally not one to commit this hard this early to a set of colors, but I mean, I, I have four very strong, very reasonable picks. Hello, dude. How's your beautiful Tuesday running? How's Beauty Tuesday going for you? Deconstruction Hammer, I also quite like if I can get enough low drops, like especially if I can get that 1-1 one, one flyer in white. Love, 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 love that card. But dead weight... Pretty great. Tithing Blade. Interesting. You know, I th I think I'm actually going to pick up the Tithing Blade here. I mean, I see the dead weight, but like, Tithing Blade does a number of things. First of all, when it flips, it does the life gain, which means that Amalia Benavides, she could potentially go insane. Also, it's an artifact that sacks well to Tarion's journal. I think it seems really nice with what we have so far. Geological Appraiser is good. Sunfire Torch is good. De Widow Foggy is very good. I'm really surprised this is here. Probably some people that haven't played Historic. Okay. Two very reasonable picks for us. There's the Abyssal Gore Stalker. There's also Tinker's Tote, which is kind of the exact card that I want. I think I have to pick this. I, I just want infinity of these. It gains life for Amalia, but outside of that, it makes sack targets. It um, has all the things that, say, craft with artifact and uh, craft with creature. It works with all of those. I, I mean, I just think Tinker's Tote is exactly what we want. I think it's exactly what we want. I'm going to stop repeating myself here because it's exactly what I want. Everything sucks. But I think careening minecart is not not that bad. It makes artifacts which can be sacked and turned into cards. Probably pick it up. 
it's a little it's a little slow and a little expensive, but you know, I'm looking at like Thousand Moons Infantry. Might be okay. Screaming Phantom. Mm. Eh. I, I, I'm I'm very eh on minecart, but I was kind of eh on all the cards that we were looking at there. All right, fungal fortitude to get something to come back. Probably just get the soul coil viper. I think this is just so nice with the land cyclers. It feels really nice. Another tinker's tote. I'm just gonna pick this up. I would like eventually to get more of these, but I think tinker's tote is like premium with the sort of set of stuff I wish to do. Hey, Mephitic Draft came back. Perfect. Oh, awesome. Love, absolutely love to see this. Yeah, I just kind of want a deck that has a bunch of little turkeys kind of swarming around here. Three creatures. Yeah, I think I will get the Thousand Moons crack shot over the Fungal Fortitude. Because technically this is five creatures with this, but, you know, I, I, I'm a big believer in creatures that exist on the board. Turn two. Okay. Rampaging Spike Tail, I think, is what I want over a Deep Goblin Skull Taker. This can be good. I think it can be extremely good in Golgari and uh, Demir, but, like, I think this is needs a lot of build around you boys. Rampaging Spike Tail, I think, is just great. Am I crazy? This shouldn't be here, right? Getting Acolytes of Eklazots are also quite good with Amalia, but I think Deadweight's extremely good. Am I crazy? <laughs> crazy lucky. <laughs> there is yet another dead weight. Um, there is a scampering surveyor. I think I'll probably get the scampering surveyor. I think. I don't know. Maybe I'll just get a third dead weight, you know? Why not? I, I, I just... I think that this will probably wheel. And I, I, I do want... Eventually... Like, or how, how, do, how do I win games? Well, I think it's eventually accumulating enough value with cards like Tyrion's Journal, with cards like Mephitic Draft with, you know, maybe big plays with Sun Coil Viper. So I don't want to be so one, two, and three drop heavy that I can't do anything late game. Like, I would really love for this Rampaging Spike Tail to wheel. We're going to get the Dusk Rose Reliquary. We've yet to get any good high-end um, removal. You know, like some premium just destroy a creature, exile a creature, that sort of thing. We just kind of have these dead weights and this kind of imprecise tithing blade. So I think a Dusk, Dusk Rose Reliquary is really nice. Um, lots of stuff to sacrifice. Again, one of the reasons why I really value Tinker's Tote. I'd also like one of those uh, gem guards. Whoa. Guardian of the Great Door. Ultec Cloud Guard. Tinker's Tote. Mephitic Draft. I, I think the Guardian of the Great Door is just way too unbelievably stupidly good with what we want. So we're going to take it. Another chance. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll love this. I think I love another chance here. I think this is good. I mean, the, these are not particularly exciting for me. Uh, and I think running, you know, two of these is, is even great. Oh my god. A market gnome or an Ultec cloud guard? I think I'm getting the cloud guard. Dead weights are just everywhere, man. I think Cloud Guard is a very insanely, insanely good pickup. And a Gargantuan Leech, huh? I mean, I'm running no caves. Yeah, also no one's picking red. There's like a thousand dead weights rolling around. I'm going to get the Rampaging Spike Tail. I, I think I'm going to get several more chances at dead weights coming up here. Wow! All right. All right, I'll get the Deep Cavern Bat. Why not? Why not? 
tithing blades here. This is here. This is here. Yeah, so I think that I'm in the correct colors. I don't know if we will run this deconstruction hammer, but I will take it. Dead weight or the first soaring sand wing. With another chance and the Soul Coil Viper, I kind of want to get the Soaring Sandwing. I think our game's going to be able to go late. I will get Puzzle Door, because it's fun to say. Maybe someone just went into black from all these dead weights. I think two is a good number, to be clear. I think two is a good number. Um... This format is aggressive enough, and there's enough just random things that have two toughness. The dead weight hits a lot of things, but I feel like in any format dealing two damage, if you had like six of these, it would you would just have a handful of non-interactive garbage. Let's set it there for now. Sure, I'll take one of these. Yeah, Tinker's Toe with Axlazots. Let me do some culling here. Get rid of this. Probably not this. All right. Yep, Stalactite Stalker seems really great here. Anything else good? You're just a greedy freebooter, but I mean, this, this does a lot. It has Menace. I have all the various ways in which I can sacrifice, like the Acolyte of Aklazots sacking things, like Tarion's Journal sacking things or discarding things. It just seems great. I'm going to go ahead and take this. Okay. <laughs> Pretty sure the Schism is a 2-4 Death Toucher that when it attacks the player with the most life or tied for the most life, I get to create a 1-1 one, one white vampire creature token. I'm pretty sure the Schism attacks while you have the most life or tied for the most life. You draw a card and you lose one life. Okay. All right. This is just this is just dumb. All right. Hey. Now this is interesting. You know, I think I think I want the adaptive gem guard. Let me just see something here. I mean, I have, I have a lot of confidence that some of these will be coming back. I, I just think I really want an adaptive gem guard. I want one of these. There's another soul coil viper. There is Bartolome del Presidio. Visage of Dread. Okay, so this is not as good as one of these two. And I think we just take Bartolome, and I think we can also get rid of this stupid careening minecart. It's probably not that important. We maybe don't need both of these. If this wheels, cool. Uh, is there anything else? I mean, Thousand Moons crack shot might not make the cut. It's another draft. Yeah, I mean. Do I have enough things to sack with this? Oops. Didn't intend to do that. Oh, hey, there's the premium removal. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we did it. Um, fanatical offering as well? Oh, my God. All right. All right, I mean, I, I, have, I have my choice of several different decks that I can make. Oh, part of me thinks that another chance might not be the right one to do if we have all these smaller scale card draw things. Oh, that is just a nasty pickup. Glorifier of Suffering. Yeah, that's pretty terrific, huh? Because this, I can sack both Mephitic Drafts. Oof. All right. I'm going to put that there just in case. Wow, and I get a greedy freebooter. <laughs> oh, hey, 
said, great to see it. Great to see it, great to hear it. I mean, part of me is just like, I guess... I guess that, uh... We don't need to run the rampaging spike tails. I don't know. This 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 is a weird. I'm not used to this this type of situation. So, the Acolyte of Aklazots is a little mediocre, especially when I have something like Preacher of the Schism. <laughs> uh, Glorifier of Suffering, maybe we don't need. Does seem awfully good. Let us split things up. I, I, I definitely don't need this many high-end, pricey things. I think that, like, this seems fine as a starting maneuver. Maybe we don't want two mephitic drafts. How else can we draw? How does this um, creature of the schism work? If a preacher attacks the player with the most life, or tied for the most life, make a 1-1 one, one white vampire creature token with life. If it attacks while I have the most life, or tied for the most life, draw a card and lose a life. So we have some card draw here, some card draw among these, card draw with another chance. I think probably no to Thousand Moons Crack Shot. Probably no to that. I can probably cut a land, because I have two of these in here. I think that seems fair. Probably gonna... Heal a Mephitic Draft. I don't know. Mephitic Draft seems just really good. Especially with Tarion's Journal. I think I cut another chance. Maybe we don't actually need the Greedy Freebooter. Because we have Deadweights and Stalactite Stalkers. Yeah, I think this is it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 creatures, 14, 15, with like a lot of interaction. Yeah, this is sick. All right, predictions are going in. How many wins am I going to get? I think this is the best one that we've drafted today. Certainly. It's just a very straightforward and linear game plan. So, we, we are, critically, we are a grinder's list. We are not fast. We are looking to kind of drown our opponent with lots and lots and lots and lots of cards and value. And this is not the hand to do that. <laughs> this is not the hand to do that. We can cast one spell. Ben faces, when you draft, do you play with the people who open the same packs as you? And unfortunately not. Um, you just you just play against someone. Phil's Nurse is unsure about 16 lands. Uh, the reason that I think that it is fair is that I have two land cyclers. So that's 18 sources. And we have lots of things that draw us extra cards. So I think that, that that all in all makes me feel pretty happy. We have a lot of lifelink too, among Deep Cavern Bat, Tinker's Toe, the uh, Vampire Generating Guy. Excellent, 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 excellent. Let's go ahead and take a peek, see what we're, what we're dealing with. Crashing Brontopal. Okay. 
All right, I mean, I think I'm just gonna play this very straightforwardly. Tinker's Tote, swing. These don't have reach. Deal for one. And then we have the Mephitic Draft into Duskrow's Reliquary, which is incredible. I don't have as much worry about the Sunshot Militia because Sunshot Militia is great installed board states as a means of slowly chipping your opponent to death. You just tap stuff. You start pinging for damage, pinging for damage. But here I am, just slowly healing. That was stupid paleontologist. I'm not surprised. I'm a grinder's list, so I am happy to exchange this. Bang. Doki. I am absolutely going to Dusk Rose Reliquary. Which one do I want to pick off? Yeah, I'm going to sacrifice this. So now I have the Sanctifier of Suffering. This also has Menace. Sanctifier of Suffering coming down means that I have the ability to... Alright. Great. Terrific. Superb. Great. Fantastic. Is there five? So yeah, this this is the only card in their hand. So I can glorify of Suffering this, buffing each of these, swing with both of these. If they double block, I just kill the Intrepid Paleontologist. May as well turn sideways, right? So I will enter, sacrifice the Tinker's Tote. God, I love the Tinker's Tote. It's so good. It's unbelievable. What good is paleontology done? Well, like, you can start exiling dinosaurs from graveyards, and this is a dinosaur, but I, I really think that this is the way to begin to get ahead. Sacrifice an artifact. Buff, buff. Little bat is going the distance. And this is going to be a 4 4 at end of turn. Sure. Seems fine by me. So they would need to go untapped land to be able to play the. Nurturing Bristleback. It's seven mana. It makes a 5-5 five, five, and a 3-3. Three, three. So if they hit, that would be a little annoying. However, we would still be swinging in the air with a Life Linker, and then we'd be playing the Soaring Sandwing, which heals and is another pile of threat in the air. Um, if my opponent didn't draw the untapped land, which appears to be the case... Okay, I will never speak again. I've learned my lesson. Whoopsie doopsies. This can also eventually get sacrificed to blast something. Kind of stinks that they're at 11 and not 10. They also have a really awkward time trying to swing. Because, I mean, they can swing for 5, which effectively becomes 3 damage a turn. Because we're healing for 2. All right. Hot foot gnome. Hot tub foot gnome. Oh my god, that's so good. All right, swing. Swing. This is at the beginning of your end step. All right. Nothing has reach. No reach, no reach, nothing, no reaches, none. All right. I 
I mean, this this just very smoothly smacked our opponent. That feels good. Feels good to be embarking upon the journey of harm. So I don't want to keep the land because I do want to do this. Sure. I want to play the Tinker's Toe. I want to sacrifice it in order to trigger the Descend trigger. And then I still have three mana available to have this up. We really don't care much about this at all. They have to be careful because we can also just swing on the ground and win. Depends on what they play. Alright, well, I mean, that's... That is a good card. Go, 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 go. Huh? I'm just gonna yawn. <laughs> Alright. Swing again. So I know technically I could do something like swing with just the Deep Cavern Bat and leave back the Soaring Sandwing for the potential that, you know. Because, like, the, the, there, there's a way of thinking, which is next turn, if I would win with one or win with two, I may as well leave this one back on this turn just in case. Then I can swing with both the following turn. But, you know, I have so much health, I, I'm just not worried. Yeah. So this should mostly block the things. So this is two and three is five and five is ten. So that's they need to be able to deal nine damage, nine additional damage. I think the only way that this can get scary is if it's plus four, plus four, and trample. And that's not nine extra damage. That's eight extra damage. So I think we're okay. And even then, if my opponent decides to do that sort of thing, we still have the stalactite stalker that we can sack and pop. And there you go. So my opponent has decided to just exit the video game, so I guess I'll make tea. I guess it's tea time. Tea time for day nine? Hold on. Am I the baddie? I'm wasting everyone's time now. This is great. This is where I like, hit spacebar and like somehow accidentally lose, and I'm like... <gasps> Victory! Yeah! All right! Yeah! No more apt word than villain. Thanks, Kakafumi. Hey, how's your project going, by the way? Victory NT? I know, in that order. 
I actually really like the height of this new camera because if I'm like twiddling my pen, my, my pen used to just like twiddle in front of the camera like right here. It's like where I'd hold it. It was so, it was so annoying. So probability of drawing that nine out of We mulligan. Nice. We want double black because of the two black and one minus five minus five. Join the dead, is it? Dismember, I believe it was called. Dauntless petrify. Oh, we get the petrify, baby. Although this can technically hose us. I gotta be a little careful to not just smash out a bunch of Tinker's Totes. Because this guy can play sack for one white and just nuke all of our gnomes. Oh. Sanguine Evangelist. Oh my god. I'm gonna battle cry about it. Man, I have been listening to music lately. This is gonna sound really weird, but I like didn't really listen to a lot of music for like a year and a half. Two years, something like that. I listened to just daily news. So I'd just like get up and be like, news, news, daily news. And then get home, be like, all right, well, it's time to, it's time for me to get to work and work, work, work. Get done with that. Oh, time to do the dishes. Let me listen to some more news. And dude, I just like have started listening to music again. And music is, let's be real. Music is better than news. <laughs> I know that's a dumb thing to say, and I just, it, it amuses me because it's dumb, so forgive me. Okay. Oh, join the dead. Nice. So, how do we want to do this? I think I actually want to do this explore, because if I actually successfully get... I guess that's fine. I think I want to leave up Join the Dead. We also play Tyrion's Journal or something like this. I'm thinking. So, definitely not the Tinker's Tote, because this will just blow up the board. I think it's actually Vanguard of the Rose is, is the right play here. Probably with the mana that allows me to actually cast it. I think that's maybe sensible. But yeah, no, I, I just, I've just been, like, listening to music a lot, and it is just... Music's sick, dude. It's so revitalizing. In a weird way, it, it feels like I it helps me connect to myself. Bring it on, bat. So, because this board state is quite stable for us, I am going to oh, this enters tapped, huh? Okay. We're gonna sack because we really want the land. Not gonna get it. It's all right. Bartolome was an unbelievable draw here. That was sick. 
<laughs> Secret 42 says, turns out that the literal oldest form of creative expression is actually good. Dude, the oldest form of creative expression was just sitting there thinking shit. So, this is my way of undermining your thoughtful comment, huh? Don't you love chatting here, Seeker of? Sorry, I'm in a really stupid mood today. I apologize. I apologize. You're always wonderful when you're here. Why am I why am I taking out the fact that you're wonderful on you? Why would I do that? It was a sick burn. Oh. Where's your evidence? I don't I don't do that here, okay? Oh boy, my favorite thing to do is to make evidence-based arguments. Said no one that uses the internet regularly. kind of arguments that I'm used to on the internet begin with phrases like, if you think about it... <sighs> that guy needs to become dead immediately. Is actually quite helpful. So I do this, and I do this. Discarding this away with you. I want to do this on my turn so this doesn't descend. I mean, you can sack it to ping for damage. That's also another option. That would be three, four, five. Yeah. So we should swing with both of these. All right, Share Bear. You gotta be so careful if you wanna be there, baby cat. You have to be so careful. Music also makes video games better. Man, Castlevania Symphony of the Night has the best music. It's the best. It's like the very best music. So, yeah, I would love to. It lagged, and I felt my heart drop. I was like, oh my god, have I lost? <laughs> Metroid Prime would not be my favorite game without music. Oh, I need to go back and beat Metroid Prime. That game was awesome. <laughs> I was having a conversation this morning with someone. Um, no, no, I wasn't having it this morning with someone. I was having it live on air about Here's My Magic 2. You're someone. Um, like, I, it just it just tickled me that I was, like, sitting there making references to Heroes of Might and Magic 2 about the design because they were asking about a tactics game. I was like, yeah, and, like, Heroes 2, it's fun because X and Y and Z. And I'm sitting there going, oh, no, that game came out in, like, 1996. What? is happening now. Kill this. Kill this. Take a small amount of damage and then a plus one plus one counter lands on this thing. Is that is that what villain's assertion is? I think that this is actually the best play is I do this. And swing like this. Villain wants to trade this. That's completely fine by me. Yeah, 1996 was 28 years ago. It's insane. I do Tinker's Totes for Tinker's folks. Because now I have a deft toucher. Yeah, I mean, there were so, like, I, I think that there's something about um, music in a lot of modern games that is very, it's very atmospheric. It's very about the vibes, you know? <laughs> and so, 
So, if you attack the player with the most life, I make a thing. While well, you have the most life. Right. A lot of, like, modern music, it just feels very atmospheric and aesthetic. And it, it just doesn't, it doesn't have, like, the kick of Mega Man 2, dude. Mega Man 2's OST, oh my goodness. That game had kick. Here, like, dude, here's Might and Magic 2. You would slow your turn down so you could hear the beautiful soundtrack of the winter landscape. The number of times I've been like, all right, I have some programming I need to do today. What do I want to listen to that will be compelling and yet will not be too distracting with annoying lyrics and weird transitions? I know. Battle music track three on loop for three hours from here is a Might and Magic 2. And somehow this is better for me. Okay. This is the game. Hello, here I come. So I did remark on this earlier. We're a grinders list. And we know how to read. I'm doing this for sure, man. You kidding me? We cast a creature spell from your graveyard. Yeah, that seems that seems like a good one, huh? Maybe this rampaging spike tail. I have discovered the correct play. I've done it. No way, man. This is a, is a complete beginner. Do you think there's a certain color deck I should stick with? Yes, and I, I have a very strong opinion of this. If you are brand new and you're playing on Magic Arena and you're uh, getting some cards, whatever you think is sweet, stick with that. Literally stick with that. If you look at something and you go, whoa, cool. That's, you're doing that now. That's who you are. Okay. I cannot stress enough. Magic the Gathering is not a game that you're trying hard to win at. For a, maybe your entire career of playing Magic. It is a game that is just fun as hell. I think I've lost more than I've won today, and today is a great day. For me, I think that um, historically, I just like big green men. <laughs> I think for me, historically, what I am all about is like getting lots of land and playing 12 mana creatures. And then when it gets countered, I go, ah. And when it doesn't get countered, I go, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's it. That's what I do. Belly Twesha. All right. Bartolome del Presidio. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly at all, but I hope I'm within the ballpark because this name is the most fun to say name of all time. 
he said, growing up with the name Champlot. Bartolome del Presidio. God, it's so good. Oh. Um, all right. I'm going to play this pre-combat and then swing. Because if I run into one of those little obnoxious cog worker turkeys. Oh yeah, Malkator! One, two, three, and I, and I live, yay! Tithing Blade. Stinging Bing Bonger. So that does have a deft bit of death touch. like the play. Bartolome del Presidio is a good card. Very good. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. And then I play the Mephitic Draft. I play... Oh, that's actually quite quite a bit better. Dude, and I mean like we we are we are about to refill like crazy. Compass Gnome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play uh Tarion's journal. I'm going to use Tarion's Journal to sacrifice the Mephitic Draft so I can go draw and draw. Some, some stuff's happening. I'm then going to uh, spend this on the Stalactite Stalker. That? Sure. I'm then going to... Um, I think I want to hit this with dead weight. This has Menace, so it just gets through. Soul Coil Viper for something. I mean, it's just, it's just absolutely filthy what this deck is doing. It's me, that sludge cudgels pain smacker. <laughs> All right. Ooh, Primordial Gnawer is actually a bit of a problem. You're really going to attack with that, huh? Wow. Really? I'm going to continue to ask the same question repeatedly. I can't believe it. I think I say no. I, I mean, I can kill in this situation. Okay. All 
Alright, so I think I know what I'm going to do here. Uh-oh, uh-oh, you stay away from the... Oh, princess, we are going way far away from the space bar. There you go, baby girl. That's terrifying, dude. This is fine. Let's go about three. Oh, greedy free booty. Great. is so bad for us. Okay. That's really good for us. Guard your hand. Transform. Alright, this is it. Dude, discard your hand. Triggers the uh, descent trigger. Okay, bye bye. Ooh, maybe I should have left some more mana up. No, I think this is fine. So there's literally like nothing that can be done here. Poor villain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. I think, I think this is right. I think this is good. Sprite one, treasure one. No reach. Nice. Well, that was closer than I thought. It was closer than I thought. But still. Still looking good. Feeling good. How much mana is the Chupacabra? I think I can only cast things from my graveyard. But 3-0 and still feels really good. There were a couple turns at the start there where it's just like we drew so much and discarded so much and it was so sick. Presidente did work. Dude, hell yeah. Oh, are you having a little bath? Oh, dude, we got we got an intense kitty grooming session going on underneath. The two drop eating two removals and hitting for 13 was fun. Yeah, that was some that was some good stuff. Oh my god, I forgot that we included you, Amalia. Dude, Tinker's Tote into Adaptive Gem Guard, it just feels unfair. It feels so unfair. Oraska puzzle doer. Oh my god, I have I have way, way too many good cards in this list. I mean I'm actually pretty concerned how many good cards are in here. I thought this card was good, but now I think this card is insane. If you have enough ways to sacrifice Mephitic Draft, it's just this, like, infinite value bear. Oh, it's so good. And then it it does three things. Draws once when it enters, draws once when it goes to the grave, and then is in the grave as a target for things that say crap with artifact. Holy fucking shit, I was not paying attention. I just dumped water all over my desk. <laughs> all right, did I get dead weighted? Sure. Oh my god, I made tea earlier and I never went and got it. Dude, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of things happening in my life right now. Okay, so this will be... Two. This is Mephitic Black. And then I tap one, two, three, four artifacts. Ugh. 
mean, this is, yeah, counter it if you want. Let me, let me get my tea and let me throw my head back. All right, everyone, please enjoy some reality. Another one. All right. Oh my God, no everyone can see the ceiling fan. That's actually pretty funny. They have to take it that way. It's a high value card. Okay, so let me see. So I got my green tea here. Oh, I didn't get the, um... Huh. Okay, so let me just do... This, this, this. That's fine. Okay. Did I... Did, have I won? Victory? Come here, tea. I put the hot water in first. I'm putting the tea in second. It's crazy. I know. I understand. I recognize. Get in there. D become dunked. Yo, that, that was the trade? Yeah, fuck yeah, hell yeah. Uh, okay, now I need some paper towels. What a nightmare. I'm just gonna cuddle this paper towel roll as if it were a baby. How about something that has two toughness? Oh, that is exactly about what I am talking, baby. This is this is my son. His name is Paper Towel Roll. Okay, so let's see, there's six in the bin. Alright. Well, I will play the huge spike tail. Buff this huge turkey here, and then one and two. Me to you. Seeing the fan is breaking my day nine in the video game all the time immersion. I'm like so sorry. I can't apologize enough. I know that the world can be harsh with its truths sometime, but I need to let you know that fan is not as big a fan as you. Is he flirting or is he arrogant? There's really not much of a difference, is there? <laughs> Wait, you live in a house? I'm not telling you. I live in a structure created by that guy on YouTube that wanders way out in the woods, doesn't talk, and builds shit. That's what I live in. I live in one of those things. All right? All right? Yeah. Why can't I hold all these open sirens? Oh, Bartolome del Principio. Out of the draft. Oops. Alright, I 
can't count. We want to work in just a pinch more damage. Let's watch, watch mathematics in action. They are now at five. And so, when this is invariably recast, this deals five. This will, with another sack of this thing, deal five. And then there's one, two, three, four, five. And so, that's why we swung on in. So we set up lethal. And I could have said this in advance, but I know that you have the memory of an exhausted goldfish. So I wanted to be kind and just show it to you. <laughs> Maths. Doing math as an attacker? The fuck is this? <laughs> that has no head. Hey, no. Oh my goodness. Then my opponent plays Settle the Wreckage. So it needs to be like removal, remove. Okay, it's GG. T is just fucking banging. I love T. T is fucking it. It's the itest shittest. Alright. 4 0. Oh, feeling good. Oh, we have, have a little bit more of a spill. Let's see, 455? I was shooting to end around 6. A little bit of a problem because as it turns out I'm kicking ass. Oh my god, this is a good hand. Oh my god. JC Show, you says I got a T advent calendar I'm excited for. It. Yeah, that's a great idea. You and me. Pass and turns together. Every day, forever. Always. Ba, 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 ba. Try traditional Chinese tea. You know, Mizura, I, you're the second person who's asked me in two days about my opinions on Chinese tea and other kinds of tea. Like, I, I am kind of uh, a bit of, honestly, like a newbie baby when it comes to understanding almost anything about tea or food. Like, I can go to places and say this is very tasty, but I've not really gone deep on almost any cuisine, developed opinions on almost any cuisine in that in that sort of way. And I kind of I kind of want to more. I kind of want to like, you know, I want to have some tea. You know what I mean? Fingers tote is like insane. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I want I want to be a judgmental tea person. Oh, what is that? Earl Grey? How embarrassing. Like, that's what I want to become. You mustn't have that. It's improperly sourced. Oh, how embarrassing. Like, I want to be that guy. Well, that's actually hilarious. So we're going to do this. This, this looks this looks like a good play. This looks like a good play. You can either just chump. You can lose the Soul Coil Viper, but it's very difficult for me to see the way in which they would win this, especially when I can just flip the damn Tithing Blade. You know, not a tea snob, nay, a judgmental tea person. Ah, thank you, Beard of Valor. That's not good. Certainly. 
All right, great. They're tapped out. Pinky out while drinking? Are you kidding me? Pinky out while judging. Yeah, sure, Eds. You have no idea how ready I am to absolutely pinky dunk on these pinky punks. Silas says, as that person, I just suggest going to a local tea shop that sells loose tea and asking for recommendations on blends and preparation methods, etc. You'll get there. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. I'm going to look up tea shops. I'm going to go in there. Excuse me. I, I don't know a lot, but I want to be really judgmental. Can you help? And then they, like, pull back a secret curtain and there's, like, a door that goes into a basement. Everyone starts talking with the same accent. Oh, I'm so relieved not to be around those plebeians. Like, oh, your name's Sean? Mmm, I think you'll enjoy a bag of this. I mean, that'd be so great. That's no head says they'd be so excited to get that question. I, I, I am the kind of person that when I um, interact with people in real life, I like to be, I don't know, fun. Say weird shit. Why not? We're describing as literally just Britain. Oh no, I know, I've been there. Indeed. <laughs> no exaggeration. I would never exaggerate. I think you know that about me now. All right, Bartolome del Presidio. The creature of the schism. Never attacks the player with the most life. Time for the most life. Do that. Oh, this is what I've got. Goodbye, preacher. Well, I guess we're just gonna do Tyne's Journal. I'm more into the Hong Kong tea shop. Damn, random orbit. You're so you're so traveled. All right. My opponent is taking it slow. Taking it slow. Here I come. Uh, Dark Thread 8 says, Does Sean Bouchard having a fancier last name than yours while also being a Sean give you some degree of insecurity? Oh, Dark Thread, I don't need a reason to become insecure about anything. We're already there. Okay. We are chilling. Defossilize. Oh my god, it explores and then it explores, and on top you have a poison dart frog? Damn. Oh, no you don't, not anymore! Alright, so what I will do... Is I will make you sacrifice that, and I will continue to hit you in the face. I don't know if I want to sack this. Yeah, I, I think I'm more intrigued by flipping this, especially given how low my opponent's getting. Did I see a Dota logo under that mug? You did, because it's clockwork. Look, it's Clockwork's face. Did you now recognize it? Because I recognize it. It's Clockwork. There he is. This is bad news. and then he gave them to me as a token of respect. 6-0. Oh. Looks like the believers have it. 
Hold on, here we go. Manage predictions, choose outcome, six or seven. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Dark Tiger says, oh yes, Sean is a pro Dota elitist. Yeah, I love being elitist. I'm elitist about things that don't matter. I'm totally nonchalant about things that do. This is a good looking hand if I ever saw one. Play Bartolome, then Mephitic Draft, sacking Mephitic Draft to Bartolome to make him bigger and drawing a bunch of cards. Yeah, if you bet against this deck, I, it's very difficult to have sympathy for you because this is the most powerful list that I certainly have stumbled across as a deck builder. I mean, this deck was insane. Okay, so I draft, draw, and then I draw again because I want to get black mana. Okay. Hurries into attack. Pirate hot. There's no draws here, is there? I mean, Tinker's Totes for Tinker's Folks. Right. Put your hat on. Hammer on. As long as none of these. It's totally fine. Because I, I actually think that I want to trade sack here. No, I can go to 14 against blue and white. I mean, still not drawing the land. I don't see a reason to. done this earlier, I think. Just turning the tote into damage. Drinking Platypus is on the topic of Dota. Would you say you're at this point knowledgeable enough about Dota to where you'd be able to confidently accept an invitation to be a panelist and a major? No, definitely not. That That's that's an amount of competency that is very outside of my capability set, for sure. Unfortunately. Because, I mean, the thing is, like, the... One of the things that I think makes being an analyst of Dota really difficult is that it is so, so knowledge-heavy. I mean, it is just a stupid amount of knowledge. Or two or less. All right, well, I mean, that just blows a bunch of stuff up. I mean, th th there's just so much knowledge. And because there is this insanely large amount of knowledge. Keep swinging. Yeah, I mean, I'll just kill that then. Yeah, th like, th there's such an insane knowledge burden that I think it's, it's difficult to even... be able to speak capably until you've seen such a huge amount of interactions. Like, StarCraft is not as knowledge-driven. It's very, like, if you understand trajectories and processes that are possible with all the factions, you can start to just generate ideas without, you know, without the amount of burden that you would need in a, in a Dota or a uh, League. Finvary says this deck is bonkers, stuck on three land, and it doesn't even matter. Yeah, and I don't even think I'm doing the optimal decisions. Wow, Thousand Moon Smith. 
So I, I would... Mm. All right, well, I'm the luckiest boy in the world. Thank God. I'm going to leave up, join the dead for a moment. Random Orbit says, does StarCraft have theory crafting coaching at the pro league level, similar to how LOL has coaches who figure out item builds, etc.? Really, no. I mean, and I, I, I frankly think that the knowledge just doesn't work like that in StarCraft. Like, I mean, the, the the thing that makes StarCraft a really interesting and a really beautiful game is the fact that there is a strong interaction between your mechanics creating new decisions and options. And I will always use the same example. In StarCraft 1, it used to be, way long ago, that you needed to build two gateways and start making Dragoons immediately, and this would hold off a wide variety of Terran attacks. So you'd get one gateway, get a cyber core, get a second gateway, so you get one Dragoon, and then two more for three, and then two more for five, and so on and so on and so on. Um, put your hat on. And then what happened is players learned that instead of going one, three, five, seven, you know, Dragoons two at a time, what you could do is you could just rush for the range upgrade with your Dragoons and go one, two, three, just building Dragoons one at a time out of a gateway. And then if you control your Dragoons well enough by positioning them really far forward and carefully microing them, you didn't need that second gateway. And what did this mean? It meant that you suddenly freed up a bunch of minerals that you could then spend doing something else, like taking an expansion or uh, you know, getting a robotics facility in Reavers. So suddenly you were both able to be offensive and defensive at the same time. And it's that kind of thing that I think makes, um, you know, it's actually quite good. Are, are, we, are we dropping frames here? We are dropping frames, oh my God. Not entirely sure why we're dropping so many frames. Let's see if it stabilizes. But it's like that kind of thing where one is impacting the other um, that I think makes StarCraft a really interesting and rich game. But what that means is that if you have some coach who's sitting there unable to generate their own advantages, unable to sort of like piece together where they're able to free up extra money, it's very hard for them to even see what is a possibility. All right, well, hopefully it stabilizes at some point here. Otherwise, I'll just throw my hands up and say GG. There, you can do that. All right, it's green. It's green again. Uh, draw and discard. So I think I just pass, because I don't think that there is a good way to deal four extra damage out of the blue. So they're swinging for five. I am now at four. All right, so my opponent has a Miner's Guide Wing. Miner's Guide Wing is actually... Totally not an issue, and we won the game. Oh, 
Oh my god, I want to win this really bad. Oh my god, no! Alright. Okay, let me... Really? Let's just start tapping stuff. Okay. We can explore on the Stalactite Stalker. That can easily help us win. Preacher is nice. Could let us draw a card. We do lose a life if that happens, though. And if we're tied, then we get to make a life linker and do more stuff. So we need to go chump, 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 probably. But again, the stalactite stalker having menace is very, very good. I think attacking with this guy is very dangerous. Did we get a new camera? We sure did. Okay, so is the video stable now? Are we a stable video gamer? In a very literal sense, do we have stable video? Oh, this guy makes the stun cap, huh? Well, that is an issue. Stable? Great. This is a tricky situation. Because here's the problem. If my opponent swings with these five, I need to block all five of them. If this one swings, I don't need to block this one. But if any of these swing, I need to block it. Okay, now I need to block every single thing here. But that's fine, this can eat this. So that's effectively the same. But this does mean that I need to block every single thing that villain is attacking. Same thing. Now I need to block with the whole board. Damn, he's done it. No, the 6-6 six, six taps? All right, I'm out. We'll blame the lag. We did lose one. I'm devastated to announce we did we did lose one. We did lose one. Reconnect. Play. Here we 
you go. You know what's funny? Do you remember that one turn where we were like, ah, maybe we should have sacrificed more with Bartholomew? I think that would have I think that would have uh, tipped the balance. And the fact of the matter is this list is so cracked. That's no uh, head says, why do you think Watsi has not been able to use the magic game engine slash lore to make a successful video game outside the card game? I, I genuinely think that the explanation for this is just not that complicated. I think genuinely that it is just really hard to make a good video game, period. That's it. It's just really hard to make a good video game. Imagine I said, dude, you get any lore that you want, period. Do as you please. I mean... I don't know, it's just, it's just, it's just hard to make a good game. And, you know, so for instance, when everyone was like, oh my god, Fortnite's a huge game, we should make our own version of Fortnite. Okay, so they tried to make their own version of Fortnite. What happened? Well... They went to zero users. Okay, I mean, I, I I cannot stress that it's not that they only made five million dollars a year, so they had to go to a small skeleton crew because it wasn't good enough. When it comes to a lot of games, it is straight up whoever's the biggest just gets all of everything, and that is all that there is to it. Um, so, actually, how do I want to? I'm going to do like this. Dinger's totes. And so, like, if I think about other games in... Um... I think I actually do want to do this. I think. I think this is right. I think. You can block here, and then I just nuke that thing, and then I think we're mostly mostly happy. Um great. So what kind of game could they make with the magic lore? I mean large budget RPG? I mean maybe. Maybe. Making a large budget RPG is really, really hard. Why would you ever do it like that? I'm just going to do this on my main phase. say oh yeah magic legends that was a um attempted arpg making an arpg that does well at all is incredibly incredibly hard straight up really 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 hard so if i do this then i have one two one two three four great that'll do it Hades style game would be sick. Making a Hades style game that is good is really hard. I mean, like, 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 for instance, Hades is the type of game that tons of people go, oh my god, I'm an indie studio. I'm gonna go make that game. This is awesome. I can make this. And none of them got anywhere remotely close to Hades level of success. And so, like, I, I genuinely think that it's just not an IP issue. I think it's just that making a game is hard issue, plus one other thing. Plus one other thing. I think that if you are a gigantic company, why would you license out your IP unless it's gonna fucking make bank? I mean, I don't actually know the combat tricks well enough. Okay, terrific. Yeah, I mean, 
didn't seem exactly like there was a huge risk, but, uh, you know, what do I know? Um, yeah, like, you could make a game like Vampire Survivors, and how much money would it make? You know, like a little bit. Make a little bit. You know, it could make a little bit. Make a little bit. Sunwing is a welcome sight. Yeah, if you have a giant IP, you want to do something that will make you like a hundred million dollars. You're not exactly, you know, clawing to get <laughs> um, really small sums here and there. So the guide wing I would just need to chump with. So I think that like this is a little better. Playing like this. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like, what, what, like, why would you license your IP for a game that would make 12 million bucks? Feels like you should at least swing for something great. And making something great in large budget is just insanely hard. Especially, I think, if you don't have a lot of, like, institutional knowledge and whatnot. Journal, huh? Hmm. Yes, I, 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 I think I, my general opinion of really large budget games right now is that you kind of need a lot of institutional prowess. You need like a team that works well together because building a team is really hard and very slow. Okay, well that just, okay, well, that's kind of stinky. Wish my opponent would draw some land for once. Okay, so then we're going to do this. So let's go draw. Draw. Okay. Okay. Oh, it taps it. Oh, fuck. Well, that's terrible news. We have died. All right. Whoopsie daisies. Shit. And uh, the one point of damage from the Mephitic is a bit of an issue as well. Well, rats. You have, like, close games, but I still think our deck counts. And this is perfect, because I wanted to stop close to six, and now we're just taking forever. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, I I think that the only way that makes sense for a, a game studio to go from relatively unknown to very, very successful, I guess would just be if they had a killer design for, like, a revolutionary multiplayer game. That's basically the thing. So, like, Drodo with Auto Chess came up with Auto Chess and then just kind of exploded and it became this worldwide phenomenon. Uh, Blue Hole with Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, PUBG. 
Yes. It was called Blue Hole, was the name of the company. Um. Like, if, if, if someone is able to do something like that... Yes, it's fine. If they're able to do something like that, I think that they have some chance of, like, detonating. But, like, making an ARPG... Goodness, if you look at how um, grindy and long-term it has been for Path of Exile. Um, like, they've, they've done some good stuff over time, but they didn't, like, explode. Or with um, Last Epoch. That is an indie um, ARPG. They've also had a very slow, steady grind. I'm trying to like just mentally think about other. Hollow Knight was pretty big too. Hollow Knight sold a lot, but it's not like this global phenomenon sort of thing. That it's like how, how many copies has that thing sold? Does anyone have a? I don't have a clue. if it sold like 10 million copies let's say and it was 15 bucks when I bought it and let's say that all of them paid 15 bucks and all of them all that money went straight to the developers that's 150 million dollars which I think is pretty great but again I'm exaggerating a lot of numbers. There's a lot of cuts that I'm ignoring. And it is still substantially less than, you know, what I would imagine a generational IP of uh, Magic the Gathering would. Because, I mean, they might be like, dude, like, we we can make $150 million already. We want to we wanna give money to something that will make us a billion dollars a year or something like this. And I think that, that that's the kind of thing that I think is very, very difficult. Alright, so how do I want to do this? Play some Amalia, probably. Get some Glorifier of Sufferings in. I've actually not been paying attention to this game. Like, I'm, I'm looking at this board state and I'm like, oh my god, what are these things doing here? This is a bitter triumph. Tinker's Coat. And again, like what I what I want to present is not that Hollow Knight would be a bad investment, but rather imagine I said, "Hey, I am going to download fifty. Um, oh, you would shoot my." Leg. No. Oh, God. This, I think, is an excellent collection of blocks. I want to trade away all this stuff because I have a 2-2 against an army of 1-1s, an opponent that is largely out of Gosh or Dean. And now I have an adaptive gem guard. Oh, boy. I'm going to do a slightly weird... Nah, I guess I'll just do the normal play. I can still sack this to gain life. But, like, imagine you bought 30 Metroidvania-style platforms. Imagine again that you buy 30 of them. How... What was the average sale of those 30 Metroidvania platformers? Again, let's also put another restriction. All released on the last year on Steam. God, this Ruin Liquor Bat is so good. And it's gone. This is the play. 
Because this can't swing, because it'll just get double blocked by these two. But in a moment, it'll be able to. But imagine all the Metroidvania platformers launched in just the last year, take just 30 of those. What's the average sales that those got? Not close to, you know, even this fictional number of 10 million that I pulled out of my ass. Not even remotely close. And, you know, I can imagine that... I shouldn't say I can imagine. It literally is the case that if you are a business person trying to make a business decision looking at something like a Metroidvania-style platformer, wow, well, a lot of the people that make this kind of game don't really make that much money. It seems to be an 8... Uh, 8899. Eight, nine. So I'm going to do like this. And then I'm going to chill. Actually, I'm going to do this once more. The adaptive gem guard is going to be something that carries us through. Again, if you're a business person, it's very difficult to be able to creatively evaluate 30 different teams. Like, imagine those 30 teams haven't made anything, and they come to you and they say, look, just give me the magic IP, and I will make something fucking killer, and we'll sell 10 million copies. It's very easy to be like, oh, well, uh, okay. Well, it's a good thing I have a giant adaptive gem guard. So, I mean, th this is all to say I think it's really hard to make a game, and it's really hard to make a bet that's good. I think, I think that if I were Wizards of the Coast and you said, Sean, you're going to work here for like 10 years. What's your plan? I would invest in a number of very small, very reasonable projects with teams that can over time grow and say, let's imagine we had like three internal teams that were all kind of small and we planned what game one would be that would be a very modest, thoughtful, tiny thing that would give experience and team building and time and resources to grow enough to where we could then work on the second game. And the second game would be the big thing. That's, that's, for each of these teams. That, that, that's to me what would be a way to do it. Soul Coil Viper is a good one. Oh boy. Okay. I should have done some tapping here, but I accidentally passed through. Seeker 42 says Sean revealing his game studio plans on stream. It's true, Seeker 42. Secretly, I own Wizards of the Coast in their IP. I secretly am the CEO of Wizards. <laughs> nice. I don't really want to swing with the creature yet. Get there. Isn't that how most game dev companies grow? Um. I. It, it, um, I, I feel like you're making a statement in opposition. And what I would say is, no. I mean, not, not really. There exist companies that have done that. There's those that have not. For instance, there's a lot of game studios that say, like, oh, hey, we worked at big company X. We worked at Activision or EA, and we are a team of veterans, and we want to make, you know, Bing Bong Craft, whatever it is. And it is it is similar to the game that we just worked on, but we want to be in charge of it, so give us a large budget of like 20 to 60 million dollars to make the game, or something like that. That's a common way to, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's do this. Oh yeah. Let's do that. Oh. Adaptive Gem Guard, winning it for us. Captain Spanish says, oh, I'm not. Yeah, like, there, like, there's a lot of game studios that just say, hey, we are experienced and we want to swing for the fences, so pay for it. And, you know, like Hideo Kojima, 
comes along and says, hey, I have a company I want to make called Kojima Productions. Give me a budget that is substantial because you know I can manage a project this big. And there you go. There's also, you know, a lot of indie devs that make a game. It doesn't, or it does okay. They make a second game that is modestly larger than the first, and then they fold because the second game didn't make as much as the first. Oh, thank goodness. So if this is 12, 13, 14, yeah. So this is this is the best play right now to just force this guy to chump. Oh my god, we did it with a broken deck. We won. This would have been actually slightly better to do it in the opposite way. Oh, Totally gonna top deck the five mana board wipe. Oh, that would that would suck a lot of ass. That's what that would do. <laughs> okay, greedy freebooter is actually a okay. that is a fine thing to see. Hit him with some of those space bars. Make a one one vampire creature token. Thank you, sir. All right. Did it. So even though we've won, I will stay after for like, you know, 10, 15 minutes chat about this topic. I think it's just really interesting. Uh, I will play Tarion's Journal. I will discard my hand to transform it. Cast stuff from the grave. Ugh. We did it. We're the best gamer around. Alright, seven wins. I was a little bumpy there, but, you know, we did it. We eventually did it. Let me take a peek 